Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast. I'm Hype. This is episode 77. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, everyone. This is Truth and Coffee Time Podcast. I am Denise, and my sidekick doing sidekick shit is Mr. Mr. B. B. <laughs> Let them know where y'all coming from. International Hype is not just a hashtag, it is a way of life. We're coming from Virginia. We are in the DMV. Virginia is the state for lovers. We've been doing that for over 32 years. So if y'all ever in the Virginia area, please holler at us. Copy that. Now let's hit the rundown. Everybody get comfortable. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 p.m. on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 p.m. on Tuesdays. Wednesdays is 216 The Blend, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, 12.30, WTNUPhilly.com on Thursdays. Friday, I say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And then we go Saturday to the THC Media at 10 a.m. Sunday is still wide open, y'all. We're looking to fill in Sunday. We're looking to fill in that Sunday. Get at me. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. That is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. It is a tri-state area situation. But if y'all need a house cleaned out or something taken care of down on DMV or in Virginia, if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Um... <laughs> Custom Hustle, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We can custom jerseys, custom jackets, baseball jerseys, basketball jerseys, hockey jerseys, custom jackets, sweatsuits, T-shirts. You name it, we can customize it. We got baby sizes and all of that shit, too. So if you need it, get at me, and we will make it happen. Uh, also, How to Hustle Seminars can still be purchased. How to Hustle Seminars, five-week course on how you do this whole situation. Just do it in my DMs, and we can make that happen for you, too. Okay, episode 77. Are y'all ready? We ready. You ready, Mr. B? Of course. Let's go. All right. What does happily ever after look like? Mr. B, we're going to start off with you for this one. Mm. What is your happily ever after? Are we talking personal? Am I being am I being a little bit selfish? Are we talking about the community? Or are we talking about the world? Or relationship? We're talking about you're happily ever after because per all right so let me give this disclaimer i personally don't believe that there is a such thing as a happily ever after Mm -hmm. as we were having this conversation off mic where there's always going to be something whether that be a kid if we tragically lose a kid somebody's parent gets sick one of us gets sick there's never going to be a situation where and then we rode off into the sunset nobody was to ever die again not a situation that could happen okay Mm -hmm. but (laughs) if we're going to give a little bit of what would it look like if this could be it? How would we get there? I would say health, wealth, and knowledge. Mm-hmm. If you can have enough health to be able to enjoy your family, your friends, uh, if you have enough wealth that you can hand down in generational wealth to your kids and your, and your family yeah. and bestow knowledge. If you have enough knowledge to be able to maneuver and, and understand um, why the why the world is what it is, it would allow you to maneuver a little better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I this is we talked about you. this. We talked about this. Like, we talked. Where did y'all talk about this at? We talked about it when we read your topic. We were like, wait a minute, happily ever after. We've been asked a lot of relationship questions, but I don't think we've ever been asked what do your happily ever after looks like because that's why you come here to the how to hustle podcast that's right that's right (laughs) content (laughs) because our 32 plus years we're still not at happily ever after hold up now we do not we don't gloss we don't gloss over 32 years of marriage over here okay yeah we have to we have an episode of why does marriage work if you check the archives over at how to hustle podcast why you will find why does marriage work and why yeah. doesn't marriage work. And part three of that series will be coming up soon. Good. Oh, wow. yeah. We call that an expensive. We call that an expensive plug in the business. Okay. <laughs> it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. But thirty-two years of being married, we still we are still not at our happily ever after. But we are at our content with who we are with. We are happy with who we are with. We are we are being we are in a, a state of joy 
because we're best friends. And so we're able to communicate. We're able to talk about things. We have, we work, you know, we take care of our health. We, we try our best to ensure that we have wealth and we are, we're putting away for a generational wealth for our grandkids. And these are things that we look at that says these are happy, but are they happily ever after? Anything can happen at any time and take that all away. So you can't sit in that. You have to be able to maneuver and know that your that happily ever after is a state of being that's temporary and it's never permanency because no one is exempt from tragedy, trauma, or or anything that happens in this world. She stole my answer, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's called wisdom. Hey, hey. Copy. I mean, I, great minds. I will tell you. Uh, if, if there's some there's some men out there that's like in marriage and they're like, if I could just divorce this joke, I'd be heavily happy ever after. after. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And there's some men out there that's like, I'm gonna work on my I'm gonna work on my position and try to you know do better. Mm -hmm. But see, the crazy thing about that is you be thinking that until you don't know how many prescriptions you got at the pharmacy. She yeah. Want to pick oh. them up. Hey, let me let me tell you something. When you when you know your girl got your back is when she's chasing you around in the morning trying to get you your vitamins before you leave the house. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, take this vitamin D. You know you've been outside. <laughs> take this vitamin D. All right, so hey, oh my answer. Mrs. <laughs> Ms. D, Ms. D killed me and kind of, you know, jumped in a little bit of what I was going to get y'all. Um, <laughs> so, like I said, yeah, I don't really think happily ever after could be a thing. So it's just like, what would make you happy in the long run and in the long term of the situation? Because my sister, shout out to Samaya, she wouldn't ask me this like off mic and I was like, ah, that sounds like a topic. Mm -hmm. But for me, it would be that uh, how the hustle enterprise turns into something that my daughters can run successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so that that situation would be that I dealt with all the bumps and bruises that comes with it. I dealt with the struggle of it and having to structure the whole situation so that it's easier for them. Right. Uh, you do all of these different but, but things in your, your life. that's happily ever after, not her. Well, well, no, no, no. I said that's my happily yeah. ever after, not yeah. kids. Right. That's not for them. That's for me. <laughs> this is a very selfish conversation we're having yeah. right now. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what do, you, what do you think about it? Now, ultimately, their goals could be something else. They cannot want to do anything with the company or none of the businesses that I have going, which is perfectly fine. Once you're old enough to make your own decisions, then you got to respect those as once you become an adult that's going to stand on your own, too, and you taking care of you, then, hey, you make all the decisions that you want. If you want to, it's one of those things, like I always tell people, it's like, while my kids are children, then yeah, I'm going to raise them as Muslims. But if they decide that they want to worship the sun and the stars, then... Once you get old enough to make those decisions, then, hey, that's your decision. Yeah. I won't love you less for making that decision, but that's what you decided. Would, so, would like, that's that what I'm saying. Would that affect your happily ever after if they decided that outside of being a Muslim? Not at all, because I know me and I know I'm an extremist. Yeah. I know that I'm going to do all that I can in any situation that I'm involved in to that when or if you make another decision, uh, I know that I won't feel like I didn't do all that I could to do it. But ultimately, like I said, that's your decision. Yeah. If I use this as an example for us, if I wanted to get y'all on the podcast and I tried to make that happen for three and four months, I can want you to come on all that I want, but until you accept the request, mm -hmm. we can't do an episode. That's right. So that's right. You can't try to make your happily ever after somebody else's happily ever after, which is why I said this is a very selfish conversation that we're having. Mm -hmm. This is all about what well, I word, want. The word happy is selfish anyway. It's subjective. Selfish. Yeah, because happy is it's subjective because it's different things for everybody. Exactly. Somebody, somebody might be perfectly happy. I work my nine to five. I clock in at seven. I clock out at three. Uh, they never mess with me. I go in, I get my paperwork done and I'm off the clock. And this is could be the rest of my life and I'll be perfectly fine. Some people like I got to be involved. It got to be chaos. It got to be constant. Like I noticed the girl that does like the backstage coordinating at my job is like, I'm looking at her like, I couldn't have 20, I, you got 25 text messages in, in three minutes. Couldn't be me. Yeah. And I'm ignoring these niggas at this point. It's like, you don't want nothing. <laughs> but, you know, it's subjective because it's different things for different people. Right. But yeah, like I said, for me, it would be that the company turns into something that is profitable because I don't even, I don't even want like wealth. Wealth sounds terrible to me. 
Right. Wealth sounds like I can't walk to the store. When I, excuse me, that's not wealth. That's fame. I'm sorry. That's my fame. bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fame is you can't walk to the store. You can't make things happen. But even once you get to a certain point of wealth, then, you know, now everybody wants to tell you about how this is wrong and that's wrong and their situation is like, I ain't gonna do that. I Just because that. I made a success out of myself doesn't mean that I've now taken on the burden of your problems. Right. You but, should probably no, get out there and do the like I did. I read an article the other day that says that um, stress comes to men and, and it specifically was talking about black men and it was saying stress comes to men, to black men when, and I'll have to find that article for you, but it was talking about how stress comes to black men when they get into this wealthy status and they have to flex and let the world know. And now that now stress is laid on them because everyone is after them or have their hand out. And it was saying that, that your happiness should be wealth and, and be an introvert, meaning your wealth should be in a state of being to set aside generational wealth for others and for you to be comfortable in this life. It shouldn't bring stress and paranoia to your life because that's not happy anymore. Do you believe that? So as a man, there's a certain amount of like kind of stress that you just got to, as a woman too, but Mm -hmm. as, as the man knowing that they looked. They looking for me to be the strength of this whole situation, mm-hmm. and at all times I must have strength. I must be in a position to provide for these people, however many kids or wife or whatever it is that you have. So there's a certain amount of pressure, a certain amount of stress that goes with that. Now, if you somebody like me, it's like I love that because it keeps me going. I was always the type of individual who was like, we got to get it no matter what. Before I had a wife, before I had kids, it was like when I was nine and got my book, my autograph book money from elementary school, I started selling bean pies after Juma. And after Juma, if I couldn't move all the pies, we're going to go to the barbershops and see if we can move the rest of them. Because I always been like a go-getter and like, I don't like depending on nobody. I didn't like asking my mom for money when I was 11. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to have my own. So now with that extra push of diapers and formula and wife and like all of that extra push just is like the extra motivation and just a little bit extra that you need. But there's a certain amount of like pressure and stress of like, I can't mess this up because if I mess this up now, what are we going to do? So there's always going to be a certain amount of that for the man. And then for the woman, it's like, I got to make sure that he's all right. I have to kind of put, for a woman it's always like she kind of has to put herself behind the children and their health and safety and all of that she got to check us both for lumps and like you said did you take your vitamin because she don't even remember if you took yours but she probably didn't take hers but she knew you about you taking yours so there's always a certain amount of stress but that's just being an adult once you get to the point where you accept that i'm an adult and this is what comes with it then it's way easier for you to deal with them situations yeah yeah yeah, I Most people don't like to deal with the reality of their situation. If the reality of your situation is we struggling right now, then, hey, look, we're not going to keep talking about how I remember back four, six, four months ago, six months ago, when we had this and we had that. Because guess what? That's not doing anything. That's not helping us right now. OK, no, right. Not. don't dwell on the past at all. No, nah, that's one of my things, man. We keep dwelling on the past. We got nothing to look forward to. When you when you take that concept and you put happy in it and you're dwelling on a past, a lot of people will say my happily ever after was back in the day. You, you know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, I can That's remember. That's because we romanticize everything that already happened. Like we act like we don't remember the part where like, hey, remember when we was kids and we was doing this and doing that? Like, yeah, you don't remember that the lights was off that time mm-hmm. or that we was hungry? Mm-hmm. Like... <laughs> People romanticize those things that was because you only remember those good part. Mm-hmm. How many times you ended up breaking up with somebody and you was like, damn, but yeah, me and Keisha really had a good time when we did this and we went here and we went there. It's like, yeah, but you don't remember that time she busted the windows out your car? You don't yeah. remember she slashed all your tires? Like, yeah. right. You romanticize whatever it was because it's already been there. You can already look back on it. The future is unknown. We don't know what the hell is going on 10 minutes from now. Your whole world can change in three seconds. Mm-hmm. Like, so you have to glorify what was. That's why I, I, me personally, I'm goal oriented. Like when we're dealing with our businesses or we're dealing with, you know, podcasts and anything else. Hold up now. 
You said we're dealing with our businesses. You supposed to then throw out those businesses and let the folks know. These are expensive plugs. Ain't nothing cheap about these. Throw them out there now. Dealing I, with our businesses. I get, I'll give you a link. Well, we got Diverse Love, which is a business mm -hmm. in itself. Where mm -hmm. but we have our merchandise, our blogs. We also and have Airbnb. Where can the folks find that? Where the, can the folks find that merchandise? www.diverselove.com. We have our merchandise out there. We have our blogs out there. And you can also jump right into the podcast right from that same website. We also have our Airbnbs. So we don't talk about them too much on the podcast because we're bringing on our, our actually we're going to be bringing on our business partners on the, in two weeks for this episode, we've already recorded to talk about our Airbnbs. We have our trucking and logistics um, company as well, 25 LLC, T-W-E-N-T-Y, the number five, I-V-E-L-L-C, trucking and logistics. And that's also where our Airbnb is at in our Reston Town Center. We have two beautiful Airbnbs out here. And we're going to get some this, more. This is what I'm talking about here. Now, we don't sit on all of this type of beautiful <laughs> real estate. We're talking about this happily ever after. <laughs> My happily ever after isn't working like a dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I'm trying trying to, get to make all it happen. Moving. You see my happily ever after intertwined H2H cleaning and custom hustle yeah, into absolutely. this whole situation. So at any given time, when you have a shot to shoot, shoot it. Damn, you got to let people know we out here working, making it happen. That's a beautiful situation. We're going to give you all another round of applause. Because that's one thing that I love to hear is people doing things. I'm never that type of guy who's like, oh, man, they think they got some shit going on. They're going to come talk about the shit on my podcast. Fuck no, talk about your shit on my podcast. I want to know about it. I want them to hear it. That was the Say other thing, too. We said our happily ever after is to see other people winning. That, to see other people winning, that we you, cheer people on, we clap you, people that on. That you mentor you know? or you didn't mentor, mm -hmm. because what it does is it gives you sight. Mm -hmm. Like, if you see somebody else do it, you know you can do it. Mm -hmm. Like, you might not perceive, like, like some people look at look at things and be like, I'd never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you can see somebody else doing it, you can do you it. You can say, yeah, absolutely. So my thing with that is I always tell people my goal is first class. And when I get there, I don't want to turn around and say, who the fuck is he? Right, right. I want to turn around and say, oh, damn, there go truth and coffee. <laughs> oh, damn, they go what up, though? They go uh, BTG. They go life be life in. Like, damn, like, I know these people that's in here. Like, these is my folks. Okay, yeah. somebody else is down in coach. Somebody else is on the tarmac. If I'm talking about getting the first class and you don't even know which way the airport is, how the fuck is we gonna talk? Like, yeah. We can't hold a yeah. we can't hold a conversation there. So my whole situation be it's not always about just trying to put my situation in front of people because it's like sometimes people will come at me and say, "Hey, we're looking for a sports podcast. We're mm. looking for relationships. We're looking for girls. We're looking for guys. We're looking for multi like you get different situations and it's like you can't score all the points all the time." Definitely. But it's like, hey, if I know if I know I can say, oh, so you looking for such and such in this city. Oh yeah, I can make that happen. If you like, I love to be able to do that and to connect those different situations because then, like you said, it, it's not even a not even like so much like you mentor the situation just because you like uh how do you say uh oh god, I'm fucking this one up. Just because you um connected that situation, we'll just say. <laughs> Sure. You just no. yeah, you feel you feel good about knowing like damn that's somebody that I fuck with and they're doing better in their situation. Yeah, Let something me, else that you to go ahead, go ahead. Tell you a happy story. I had brunch with a, a a friend of mine on Sunday, and she became a friend of mine through another friend. But she also helped um, us help me get my children's book published. That's the other plug. I have a children's book called Grand Joy. That's all on you. <laughs> called green there you go and it's um and it's in walmart just got picked up with target so it's it's a beautiful book beautiful book but what i was talking with her I'm talking about you but what i was talking to her about is that the happiness is is that i'm on a, a black author support group on facebook and i i will send them her name because she's a publishing resource but I never see anything come back. And as we're sitting here at this brunch, she says, oh, she says, there was this guy who came to me from one of your support groups and I helped him publish his book. 
And now his first book is out there in, in, in Amazon and Walmart. That's a happy for me because it's like, all right, he, you know, you are the resource. You are a connection. You may not have been a mentor, but we all, the table is big enough for everyone to eat. We Absolutely. all can eat at the table. There's enough seats for us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that, and it's one of those things that everybody doesn't realize and they wish that they did. Something that y'all touched on, though, Mr. D, I believe you said this, is that your wife is your best friend. That is a part of your happily ever after. It's actually getting to know this person before you just say, like, I do. Or before you say, I'm going to build a life with this person. Because I know as a man, it takes a whole lot to say, I'm going to trust this person with my government name and my social security number. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. and for me my whole thing is it takes a lot for me to say you can be the one at the table doing the homework with my kids because mm -hmm. everybody can't have that seat yeah anybody mm -hmm. could be the jump off for the night but everybody can't be in a spot where I'm giving you me and my children to be because I didn't have no kids before me and my wife both my kids is by my wife hey, both. Um, but me and my wife was best friends before we mm -hmm. was in a relationship. And people would always ask me, how was that your best friend? I said, because if I need somebody to sit here and wait for the cable man, because I got to go to work, she'll sit here and wait for him for me. If I need somebody to help me carry the other end of this couch, she'll help me carry it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. knowing that you go through your life and you have somebody that you can depend on, somebody that you can rely on, somebody that you can trust to speak for you if you ain't even there, that is a very big thing that gets you to like your happily ever after type of thing. So you touched on that, but I wanted to throw that in there for the audience. What do you feel about that, though, Mr. D? I, I mean, she's sitting right there like you. She's sitting right there like you was really yeah, going to say too much about it. I, 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 can't, I can't sit here, you know, in fib because she know me for 32 years. So. <laughs> I, I do believe um, we start in a relationship, we start the relationship out is trying to fill each other out. Mm -hmm. Once you fill mm -hmm. each other out, you're trying to, you know, see where their where their minds at. You know, there might there's already a physical connection, or you wouldn't be looking at her, she wouldn't be looking at you. So there's a physical connection, but where's her mind at? Mm -hmm. Where's she going? Much. Is she on the same trip you are? Are because you can die off halfway through the marriage because she ain't, her her rocket blasters ain't going where yours is going, mm -hmm. and so they just kind of like fall off, you mm -hmm. know. So if you're Not to mention that y'all can just grow into two different people. At 25, we were great for each other. Yep, and, yep. and we discussed that before. If she wasn't like I say, baby, you ready? We're gonna go do this, mm -hmm. and she's like, yeah, and she does me the same way. Hey, I'm gonna do this podcast mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. I was in the military, did a whole bunch of good things for, for this nation and was a superhero. Mm -hmm. But oh, he just gave us a tease, y'all. Like, <laughs> but but he, she was like my rock. She stayed in the back. Mm -hmm. She was the one that raised the kids, made sure the house was okay, did everything, made it, everything was okay. So when I was at war, I didn't have to worry about my children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yes, then it flipped after I got out of the military. She said, I said, well, look, I follow you around for 20 years. And that's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. So now she called me her sidekick. That's mm -hmm. why uh, she's the superhero or the super shero now. <laughs> and I'm the sidekick. Mm -hmm. It's because now I'm sidekicking it. She so doing now this, it. this is a segue beautifully into Truth and, Co and Coffee Time podcast. Yeah. Now, this is something that I learned from about y'all from listening to the show is that y'all was both military. Yes. So episode two of the How to Hustle podcast was what does the flag mean to you? That was something that I would like to throw at y'all and get an answer out of y'all. Shout out to my man Bella the Great was on that episode, still available in the archives. You got to go to SoundCloud, though, exclusively to get that one. Yeah. And How to Hustle podcast one, too. <laughs> I, I think I, I answer it first. I, I, I get a, a first shot at it. I know she, she is, has her own opinions, but when I was in the military, the flag was first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I was, it was country with the flag, mm -hmm. my guy, my family. That, that was the way it moved. Mm -hmm. And I was all about my country. But when you're in the military, you fight for the freedoms that you don't have. So I don't have the freedom. 
to open my mouth up and tell you how I really feel about why we're fighting or what we're doing. I went to four or five wars, conflicts, both covert and in regular wartime. And that stuff broke me down. I'm 100% disabled because of the country. So now I come back, you looking at what's going on in America, and you're like, why I fight for that flag? So the whole, the whole setup is you gave up your life for people to get murdered in the street by police? That's crazy. So the flag I fought for was that the flag that I look at today, I don't know. It's twofold. Copy that. Mrs. D. Yeah. So I, I, we, we, this is another conversation we have and we have it often because we have a black son, we have black kids. It doesn't matter that their father is white. The world looks at them as black. If they got mm -hmm. 1%, they're black, you know? So we talk about that. We are a military family. Our kids was raised in the military. We travel the world. Military brats. Military brats. My husband fought for this, this country, several wars, and we stood proud to, to call America our America. And we still, we still stand proud to call America our America. We just feel the shift. And the shift has always been there, but you don't feel it as present as you feel it today with so many things that happens. So it's almost like if you work for a company and that company has a mission and you start working for that company and you fight for that mission because that's the company you're working for. But as you continue to work for that company for months and years and years, you start to see behind the, the, the veil. You start to see behind the curtains mm -hmm. of how that mission is simply nothing but words. And you start trying to figure out how to trust but verify, mm -hmm. how to think about what you're doing for yourself. So I still love my country. I still love that we have the American flag and it stands for, it's supposed to stand for stuff that is tried and true. And it's, it's supposed to stand for a united front. It does not always stand for that. And that's the part that gets you in an emotional state of how can this be your America when it's clearly not everyone's America. Correct. So there right, is that. So, this is definitely good. We definitely doing this. Is, this is definitely going to be a podcast uh, uh, episode. <laughs> We'll talk about that when we get off. But uh, thank you for them answers, because yeah, once I start picking up the phone, and you means you've triggered something, and we got another topic. <laughs> um, let's go to the truth and coffee time now. Couple of things about the podcast before we wrap this episode up. How long have y'all been doing the podcast? Um, about a year. We we um, released our first episode, our trailer, in September of last year. So we're almost right at a year of doing this. Do we have anything planned for the one year anniversary? You know what? Sitting here talking to you, we're we're looking at that that live, but we got to get something for that one year anniversary because honestly, honestly, when we first started this this journey, we didn't know if we would continue it. We didn't mm -hmm. know if we would be able to continue it. We didn't know if we knew what we were doing enough where people would even listen to us and want us. Um, to continue it. So this first year, we have went through so many trials mm -hmm. and, and tribulations just to get to it. So we do have to plan something for this this one year, um, even if it's just a live on, on, on stream of us recording a podcast and just thanking everyone. But we do have to do something that's special for it because this blossomed into something that we really didn't see coming. We didn't see we didn't see the full picture of, of what could happen with this podcast. Hey, I would say buy yourself a cake, buy a bottle of champagne or something. Celebrate those accomplishments. Don't mm -hmm. let nobody belittle the situation that it's been a year because 5,000 people started a podcast and they stopped after episode five. Absolutely. So, 
Absolutely. We, we've seen the statistics. We clapped it up. We clapped it up after 10 because our master class, they was telling us between five and seven people quit. They stop it. Well, they don't, because people, don't, people don't, don't be really, people don't understand that this is not just a hobby that you have on whatever the day it is that you record on that you got to be really thinking this. You got to be really living this. You got to be really trying to come up with ideas and ways to make this thing different. Everybody's doing a podcast, mm -hmm. but you have to find out what makes you different than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You can't just come on and do a parody of Joe Buttons because if somebody yeah. wanted Joe Buttons, they would go to Joe Buttons. Buttons. Joe Buttons. They wouldn't come to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Why would I come to you if that's what I wanted to hear? Right. This is why I tell people the category that I'm in is shit that makes sense because you mm -hmm. will always come here and get something that makes sense. Well, we know, um, we've had a few people try to pigeonhole us because he's white and I'm black and they go, well, you know, we thought y'all were talking about just diversity stuff. We thought y'all was talking about interracial stuff. No, we do. We do. We do talk about interracial stuff, but we, we talk about the perspectives of, of him being a white man, me being a black woman and our relationship. And how that journey and that experience look to us. That's what we talk about. And then we share that with others. We don't, we don't pigeonhole ourselves just to talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, because we didn't know shit about that when we first got married. We just got we got married because we loved each other. It had nothing to do with diversity and inclusion. That that part of us we all always had in us, but it didn't have no title. That title is a trend. That title is something new that the executives put on, on, the, on the forefront of corporate America to make sure that they attract the right quota to get the, enough black people in there. You know. The last thing before we close out the episode, uh, this is what I need to know. Can we get Mr. D, um, excuse me, Mr. B, can we get Mr. B some preserves, some butter, some jam or something? Because you tell the man he's dry like toast every episode. <laughs> Can we get him something on that toast so that it is not dry? Look, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come up and visit you, right? We just gonna hang out, and so you can know that I'm not <laughs> like toast. I'm just sidekicking it over here, you know. Copy that. Copy that. I'm, I come check you out. So I'm, like, I'm bring I'm bring me and my son to come up here and just kick it with you, man. I'm like, damn, we can't get my man no jelly, no apricot, nothing. Like, <laughs> Wait, wait, hi. Do you know how many comments I get a week of people saying, yo, leave Mr. B alone. You're not dry <laughs> like toast. Leave Mr. B alone. <laughs> hey, man, that's one of those things. That's one of those small things that's marketing and promotion. You can make a t-shirt out of that. <laughs> dry like toast. <laughs> Yeah. All right, y'all. That was episode 77 of the How to Hustle podcast. I appreciate y'all coming on. We. <laughs>